in front of us we have a Remington Wingmaster in 20 gauge. I purchased this gun about two months ago and had a uh, tremendously difficult time reassembling the gun, this part of it, after cleaning. I've owned a 12 gauge for about 20 years and never had any troubles with it. So for me it seemed like there was some issue with it. I took it, I called Remington on it uh, and I drove it to the gunsmith that they recommended a couple of times. That gunsmith was able to reassemble it but with difficulty. Second time I did it the gunsmith agreed there was some issue and sent it in to Remington. Remington uh, returned it right away which was uh, interesting and they have a little comment on it. Here it is. Remington or reassemble the firearm 20 gauge are a little more tricky to assemble than a 12 gauge. Well I'd say they're a lot more tricky. Anyhow, what I've done, the gunsmith then showed me um, his tricks for being able to assemble it, and uh, I'm going to show those to you. When I talked to a gunsmith at Remington, they said when they assembled it, or at least this particular gunsmith, he did it without the trigger assembly in and put that in last. But the instructions don't say that. But the reason he said he did it that way is that you get the shell carrier, which is this piece right here, out of the way. So before I start assembling it, I did want to go through a little terminology. First we have the trigger plate assembly here, and this is the carrier on the front. We have on the trigger plate assembly, we have the action lock right here. So that act, that's the action bar lock. Okay, that's going to be uh, used to be able to cycle the, um, the gun. We have the receiver, this big piece here. And then inside of the receiver, this is a little difficult to show, but we have two pieces of metal that are called uh, the right and left shell latch. So here we have the left side of the gun. And I'm going to flip it over to hopefully be able to point this out to you. It's a lot easier with the uh, trigger plate assembly out. Okay, so we have... left shell latch. This piece right here perhaps you can see it this way there. You can see I can press on it with my fingers there's a little indentation there that allows me to push it in. It's important to be able to push this in all the way when reassembling. Okay, then on the, the port side, the ejection port side, which would be the right side of the gun, there is another shell latch called the right shell latch, and there it is. You can see how I can push it in. You can see how it runs pretty much the length of the receiver inside here. Okay, there's a couple of holes here. These are for the trigger plate pins. And I'm going to uh, first put in the trigger plate assembly. So simply grab that and you can see there's a larger hole and a smaller hole. And this gun also incidentally had a problem with the trigger plate assembly. This particular pin called the trigger pin. This pin needed to be filed down by the gunsmith. That was another problem with this gun that I was disappointed in. You can see they had, a, before they did it, the when it was assembled, it had actually left a scratch in the gun. Sort of a deep one, too. Okay, so I'm going to put the trigger plate assembly into the receiver. Okay, trigger plate assembly is in. Now I need to put in the trigger plate pins. I can put the rear one in here. And I happen to have a plastic piece that I can use to push it through with. And I'll put in the front.
Okay, both pins are now flush with the receiver, both sides. Carrier works fine. Now comes the very difficult part, and I get this part. Uh, the gunsmith got this right about one out of three attempts. It takes me anywhere from one out of five to one out of ten attempts to get it in correctly. So, take the fore end, and we take the slide block and place it on the end of the fore end, right in these latches, or these uh, indentations. And I want to point out while I'm doing this, these these uh, holes in the slide in the action bars, these two are the action bars, as you can see the holes there. It goes right there. Those holes are going to be important for assembly later in terms of helping me figure out where the where the uh, action bars are relative to the to the uh, shell latches. The whole thing is uh, relationship of the action bar to the shell latches and the slide block and the bolt. Okay, so we slide this back in until we get it so that it will stay in by itself. Now I reach up and press the right shell latch up at the very front. Press the right shell latch in as hard as I can until just a little bit of the circle is left showing on the the uh, action bar. Then let go. Then I press in the left shell latch and I'm going to press in right here in the very front. Not in the back, in the very front because I got to be able to press in as far as I can. It's falling out. Get the right one back in. Okay. Now, pressing in on the left shell latch as far as I can. Okay, it's moved in about, I moved it back in now about a half inch. And now, I should be able to get it assembled. Now let's see if it cycles. A lot of times it doesn't. This time it did. I'm going to take it apart again by pressing in on the left shell latch. Removing it. Okay, we're going to try it again. Put it in. Go underneath on the through the um, loading area, shell loading area. Press the right shell latch in as hard as I can at the very as far forward as I can until just the hole is left remaining in that action bar. Okay, now. Same thing on the left shell latch. As forward as I can and as hard as I can. It's a very tough pinch. Didn't work. Got to do it again. Start over on the right. Go to the left. Didn't, didn't work, I could tell, because it slipped out on the right side. Go here again on the right. Got it in there. Then to the left. Now let's see, locks there, let's see if I press in the action lock, if I can cycle it. I'm getting better. Two in a row successful, I think that's a record for me. I'm going to disassemble one more time. The fore end, the action bars, Slide block. Breech bolt. Carrier. Left shell latch. Right shell latch. Good luck. So I can take it all the way back out if you want. I can 
slide it in until and I still have this right shell last pressed in all the way to the metal and I slide it in and as it starts to get close to as that hole in the action bar begins to get close to the receiver I let go of the right shell latch now the question is have I pushed it in too far or not and you only know by going through with the left shell latch so I reach over I'm going to show you this upside down first so you see what I'm doing there's the left shell latch and I'm going to press in right up here the left shell latch but, but I'm going to use my left hand to do it and I'm going to have a pinching motion between my left finger and thumb and I have to press up gently on the carrier not much and I'm pressing I don't know if you can see that through there I doubt it it's very difficult to get this bit filmed right because there's hardly any space but uh, I'm coming in underneath the shell carrier at the very front and pressing it all the way to the metal and then coming in just a little bit but I'm past the holes and I've then got it in now does it work or not because yet sometimes it'll still jam so I have to press in the action lock down here and see if I can get it to cycle can't do it so I have to take it out again by pressing in the left shell latch Moving it all the way out and start all over again. Okay, got the right shell latch pressed all the way in until it's just in front of the hole there. Now, reach in, press in the left shell latch all the way, and didn't work. Got to disassemble. So it's left shell latch all the way back out again. Do the right shell latch. Left shell latch. Didn't work. Okay, let's do it again right left okay it's in let's see if it works I'm pressing in the action lock it worked okay so that is the process and that is how it that's a typical process it takes me five to ten times in order to get it right